Welcome to Inspire and Move, the show that inspires you to create, connect, and grow. I'm going to bring you meaningful conversations, aha moments, and all the motivation you need to up-level every part of your life. I'm Ali Aruda, founder of Inspire and Move, and your personal hype girl. I've gone from fashion school, to celebrity stylist, to corporate marketing, to brick and mortar entrepreneurship with my husband, each time learning incredible lessons how to pivot, reimagine, and implement the steps to become successful. I am passionate about inspiring others to live their best life, a life of joy. We have the power to design a life that we love because life is too short not to. The best part is that you weren't meant to do this alone. If you feel like you were meant for more, let me ride shotgun with you and together, let's get you to where you want to go. Hello, you guys. I am back. We had just a little one week hiatus for a hot sec on the podcast because there was so much going on. So many amazing things going on and just didn't have the space or capacity to have some intentional time with my mic. I even took my little travel mics to Arizona thinking that I would have some nice quiet time to sit and jam with myself, party of one. But the days were full and the days the days and my cup was full. So I apologize for keeping you guys all waiting, but we are back and we have some seriously exceptional guests coming at you really, really soon. The conversations with these incredible humans were so amazing and just so full. I think we might actually split them up between a part one and a part two. So you just get all the goodness across two episodes per guest. And I can't wait for you guys to see who they are. But more than that, just see and see the conversation, but hear the conversation. It was truly so great. And this was a a day that I spent in Arizona filming filming and recording with some really special humans and some people that I I get to also call friends. So I'm really excited. That was something that I've been really looking forward to when launching the Inspire and Move podcast. So I cannot wait to share that with you and to also bring you guys some amazing guests for the year and some really good topics and conversations. So, so many amazing things to look forward to. But today I wanted to just kind of regroup, have a nice little solo episode, a little quickie, just kind of recalibrate with each other. And I'm so grateful to have you here. And if you were following along on Instagram, you would probably see that Matt and I were off in Arizona for almost a week and a half with a schedule that was full of so many incredible things. Starting the week off, we hosted our first ever wellness retreat. And that was something that really kind of was a big goal of ours back in the summer. We had attended one of Chris Harder's roundtables. You've heard me talk about those experiences before. Sorry if you can hear some dogs in the background. There's a lot happening. But we had attended a few of Chris's roundtables, and they really are something that I love recommending to others, you know, depending where you are in your business and what kind of investments you are looking to make in your business. Chris's roundtables were remarkably transformative and expansive for both myself and Matt. And one of the ideas that came up for us in our our second roundtable was to do a retreat. And we selected a resort, a wellness resort in Arizona, in Carefree, Arizona, that we had been to before. So we felt really confident putting our brand name behind this location and and building this experience. And fun fact, I actually used to always curate travel experiences in my luxury automotive marketing job. They were always centered around driving experiences, brand experiences for the different luxury brands like Porsche, Audi, McLaren, BMW. And they were, gosh, that was such a cool time of my life. And I'm so grateful for those years. And I had so much joy curating these experiences that clients and their spouses would purchase, like they would invest in. And I had the, the privilege of designing these itineraries based around, you know, driving events or car shows, whatever it may be. And it was really fun to kind of tap back into that for our own brand, for our own community and people. And the group of people that we had on this retreat was so amazing. And we knew that going into it, we would look at our list, especially when we sort of had the list of guests locked and loaded. Our goal was sort of anywhere from 10 to you know 14 guests. And we had 10. And then Matt and I you know, are also there obviously. So we make a group of 12, which is a really comfortable number, but really great for our first retreat. And we looked at this list of 
guests and really, really felt like, oh my gosh, what an amazing group of humans. And a lot of them knew each other from our gym, from Benchmark Fitness, but not everyone. Not everyone was a Benchmark member. One of our friends, Adrian, he doesn't even live in Canada. He lives in LA. And he showed up just full out, you know, showing up only really knowing Matt. We were kind of like voice note and DM friends. And he showed up and played full out, not knowing anyone, and just contributed in such a big way to the energy of the group, to the conversations. And Matt and I are really excited to have a, a nice episode together to talk about the retreat and learnings. You know, we're always so aware that life experiences, good times, challenging times, always or most often has a lesson or lessons attached to it. And, you know, you can curate the best experience, but it's the people that really make it. And we've had a friend actually say this even about business, that, you know, business is easy. It's people that are hard. So people really make a difference when it comes to what you've curated what you're building. And this group of humans that joined us for our first ever retreat just left such a mark on us. We had so much fun with all of them. And it is so powerful to, you know, set back, like just from kind of like that pseudo bird's eye view and look at everyone. And at one moment, we actually were walking across the outdoor balcony, like walkway from your room and to get down to like the main areas on the property. And that was an amazing perspective for us to see all of our guests taking pictures of one another and styling one another and really seeing like, wow, what what an amazing group of people. And what I kind of wanted to talk about today, and I feel like I could talk about my gratitude for our, our group of humans that joined us for our retreat, probably for at least 20 minutes, but I don't know if all of you want to hear that. So we are going to talk more about, you know, this week in Arizona for Matt and I was chock full, like full on. And what I want to talk about today and sort of the lesson in today's episode is about setting expectations for yourself. And I think that could be a really big topic that you can apply to a lot of different areas. But for this, the the relatability comes from this week of travel. This week in Arizona, and Arizona does happen to be one of our favorite places, we feel really aligned when we're there. We feel really happy. We have made some incredible friends that are locals and live in Arizona that we would talk about that when we would do our morning gratitudes and things we're excited about for weeks. We're like, we're so excited to go back to Arizona. We're so excited to see our Arizona friends. We hosted some of our Arizona friends at our private dinners for our retreat group that we surprised them with. And that was really fun. I love surprises. So I loved having that component to our itinerary and for our group. But we went into this week knowing that, you know, these eight days in Arizona are so loaded. We are hosting a retreat on the top half of the week. So we will be on all the time. And yes, you know, it's in the desert, it's wellness, and you can move slower, but you're still on. Like I'm still always, like Matt and I are always going to go to dinner early to check how everyone's names are spelled on place cards. I'm a big attention to details kind of girl, especially when it's events, but also especially when it's ours, when our name is on it. People have trusted us. They've invested money and time to be a part of this experience. So I always want to ensure they are going to have the best experience and we can provide the best value for them and constantly figure out like, how can we do better? How can we raise the bar on what we're offering even more? So also had high expectations for ourselves and what we were delivering in the first half of the week. In the second half of the week, we went to Scottsdale where we got ready for our first of three dinner series events. And the dinner series is this incredible event that has been curated and hosted and produced by Lori and Chris Harder. And you will hear so much about this. Matt and I will for sure chat about this together. We had the most amazing special guest Uh, in this first one in the afternoon, Dean Graziosi, and he dropped so many wisdom bombs that I can't wait to share in a separate episode that will be, you know, really tangible. You can get some good nuggets to take away. But I just kind of want to paint the picture of what this week looked like, that there was a lot happening. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw the happenings each day. I've received a lot of feedback from people, whether it be, you know, in DMs, text, phone calls, emails, recognizing like, holy smokes, what a week you had. 
And I say this because we created this expectation for ourselves before we even got to Arizona. We knew exactly what we were signing up for. We knew that before going to Arizona, we want to feel really good. So we would look at our social calendar. You know, how social are we being in a week? Because we don't want to have too many cocktails, too many nights of the week. We don't want to be super tired. We want to ensure we're spending time with our dogs at home before we leave them for eight days. We don't want to skip our workouts. I actually dialed up my workouts. I wanted to tack on a little bit, you know, 20 minutes of cardio after my strength training sessions. Now, I say that just because that worked for me. That doesn't necessarily work for everyone in terms of how, your level of training, your time. I'm obviously spending half of my day in a gym. So for me, adding an additional 20 minutes really worked for where I was. But Matt and I both wanted to go into our week that was full in Arizona feeling really good and also feeling really aligned with these busy days that we had back to back to back and went from having our retreat, the dinner series. I did a full day of podcasting, interviewing, which is new for me in person. And I was a little nervous. I was nervous. I was tired. I was frazzled, but I was really excited. We did it on video as well. So, you know, being prepared with not only what I'm asking and, you know, showing up to how I can curate these conversations with these exceptional guests that have taken time to sit with me and taken time out of their busy schedules. I wanted to show up in a, you know, A plus 10 out of 10 state of mind and and really over deliver on that one hour together. But also being on video, you know, being prepared with different changes of clothes and different shoes. And then Saturday, I attended Lori Harder's Girlfriends in Business event. And then Sunday, I hosted one of my girlfriend walks at the Scott Hotel. And we had a few other spots that we kind of carried on with. But you can sort of hear in that schedule, like, that's a lot. It's a lot of days back to back. It's a lot of extroverting. It's a lot of moving parts, of, you know, outfits, footwear, I've had a whole bunch of gifts that I brought for the retreat, for the girlfriend's walk, different products that that partners of mine contributed that I just felt more confident traveling with versus shipping. So again, kind of coming back to the lesson of expectation, I was very hyper aware of my own expectations of myself. I knew that this week was going to be full. I knew I was probably going to go to bed a little later than 9.30 p.m. because I'm away and we might be eating later and I will be having wine potentially every night. I can confirm I did. I'm still away. I want to enjoy myself. But finding those boundaries to ensure that I can still perform at, you know, maybe I'm not optimal level, but I can still have high expectations of myself of how I show up in the room. And I do have high expectations of myself when I show up to events. I want to light up the room. I want to be memorable. I'm also investing to be in these rooms. So why am I going to show up and be like a dud? You know, these are all things that you can really think about when you are crafting your own expectations, expectations of how you roll into this room and these experiences, but also approaching a week like this. And I've even said this recently with some friends of being really in touch with your own expectations when it comes to friendships, relationships, that I think, you know, we could probably go on down a whole dark web on this topic, but I think it's a really great exercise to do a little bit of self-work about expectations. And maybe you're going through a season of transition with people in your life, with friendships, relationships, colleagues, you know, you, depending on how this resonates with you as you're hearing this. I've really sat with this recently and it has brought me so much inner peace that I am very aware now when I approach certain situations, relationships, that I yeah have this inner peace of what my expectations are. So even having these conversations in Arizona when people look at me and say like, aren't you tired? It's like, of course I'm tired. I've been operating at this like crazy high pace and frequency for like six days. But look at the week that I have. Like I, I have so much gratitude for what's happening in my life right now. And I have so looked forward to this week for a number of weeks and months, but I knew exactly what to expect. And then Matt and I like thought ahead how like, okay, we're going to ensure we have at least a day and a half on the back end to just sit quietly and 
go for walks, get coffee, go to Kaleidoscope that we love so much in Old Town, read our books. And it was nice to just operate at a slower pace for that last sort of day and a half before coming home. And now we're coming home with these, we are home, and we came home with a really full heart, a really full cup. Yes, tired, but you can fix that. You know, you can focus on how much sleep you're getting, dialing back that social calendar. Don't skip your workouts. For us, that's really important that that energizes us and goes back to sort of the routine component and how we can just kind of take everything that we experienced in this time in Arizona, how we can come back, sit in the gratitude of it, have this full heart, and that we we knew we set these expectations for ourselves. They were high for how we're going to show up, not only as the hosts of our retreat at the top end of our week, but also on the back end where we were going to be guests and attendees in these rooms and that we wanted to make our mark. But then also the expectations of knowing that, yeah, these these days are back to back. They're long. They're full on. I'm going to show up fully. I'm going to be extroverting hard. But then we can dial it back when we get home and we can realign ourselves. We can recalibrate and focus on what's next. So my little takeaway message for you guys is really kind of looking inward of how you can analyze your own expectations. Do you need to do a little bit of work on them? Do you need to kind of check in on some friendships, relationships, relationships in the workplace? And what are your expectations? How can you adjust yours so that you're also not letting yourself down and disappointing yourself? Because when we know what our expectations look like and we can sort of sit in that. And I was just having this conversation yesterday with my friend Megan, who's going to be on the next episode, which I can't wait for you guys to hear. We were chatting about, and you hear this conversation a lot with entrepreneurs, especially I find, is you can go into some relationships and conversations and you can have really good intentional chats where you're probably going to both ask each other good questions. You're going to be interested in the other person, not trying to be the most interesting. And you're going to feel really fulfilled in those conversations when you go home and be like, oh my gosh, you know what? That was such a great conversation with Megan. We had really good chats about this or I learned this. Did you know this? But you might go into a family dinner or someone's family birthday party and you're going to recognize and read the room that, you know what, I'm not going to get those conversations today. And I think the sooner you can get to that point and understanding those expectations of what those different conversations are, what those relationships are like, you're going to find a little extra inner peace for yourself. So as I said, takeaways for today, just going really inward, looking inward of adjusting and analyzing your own expectations, which from my experience recently really does correspond beautifully with that little extra inner peace. So little quickie for you guys today. So nice to be back connecting with all of you. If you're listening here, thank you so much. If you feel so inclined to leave a little five-star review and a rating, I would just love that so much. And again, I'm so excited for this year ahead of what the Inspire and Move podcast is like and the Inspire and Move community. We've got some great things up our sleeve. Matt and I, I said, we feel really aligned when we're in Arizona and we came up with some really great, juicy, big ideas that I cannot wait to peel back and build and curate and then share with all of you. So have a great day, evening, morning, wherever you are. Thank you for listening. Lots of love for you. Thank you so much for listening. If you love this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took 30 seconds and shared this on social media, send it to a friend, or leave a five-star review. There is power in community, and I am so grateful to have you part of mine. 